Hey you guys, I just want to give you a quick overview of the new Fraybill VYPR tip-up. There's not a whole lot of information out there at the moment, and this is a brand new product uh, from Fraybill um, that I was very interested in testing out and looking at. And uh, so far, I will say this is pretty dang cool. So let's just go over it and uh, see what you guys think. Uh, real quick, here's the box. It talks about how there's an anti-ice aeration system, so it's like a built-in bubbler. Then you have a straight line reel, an integrated tip-up light, and then here are some of your other features on the back of the box. If you want to read that, go ahead and hit your pause button, and you can kind of read some of those features. Uh, we won't do that here. We'll just kind of go over the product itself. So let's take a look at this new tip-up by Fraybill. So my first initial impressions of this is that it's pretty durable. Um, this plastic right here seems to be made of that plastic that they use for uh, five-gallon buckets. It's fairly heavy. Um, not too heavy, but I mean just heavy so it feels, you know, well built. It has the inline reel here. I just kind of have it on free spool, but you know, the flag is locking it in. Uh, it has some insulation there, some styrofoam. That's the bubbler cord. And then, uh, yeah, you got your flag here, you got your switches here. Uh, so let's break this down. Let's see how this works. So the first thing I had a question on is how wide is it really? Because it says that it can go over a 10 inch hole. And actually, it is 12 inches in diameter. So you're going to get a good one inch around um, a 10 inch hole. So you have good clearance on this tip up. The height, the overall height of it is about four inches, a little over four inches, which is kind of nice because it keeps the inline reel out of the water, which I really appreciate that design um, and allows you to kind of just squish this down onto the snow. So here's the tip up with the window open and here's your uh, free spooling reel let's take the flag out really quick it's just like some of the other tip-ups that you have you kind of just push on it and the flag kind of pops up but you have your inline reel right now i just have it on free spool um, you have a tension knob here to kind of keep that from happening so it doesn't spool too much um, very easy to set here's some little tabs right over here so when you're done using the system you can actually reel it in put your hook onto that little tab and then kind of tighten it down so it stays so that your, your uh, hook doesn't free spool out and get tangled up when you're driving around on the ice. That is a great thought uh, by Fraybill. So good feature there. Here is your trigger mechanism. Um, it has two settings. It has a light setting here towards the bottom and a, you know, a tougher setting right here uh, towards the plastic part. Um, this right here is the hook to hold it in while it's stored. And you can see here that the trigger is actually locked into place so you don't have to slide the flag or this trigger up and down on this uh, spring. So I appreciate that. I hate having to slide the flag up and down or the triggers up and down on that flagpole. So appreciate that design. Um, this is where it kind of goes down in. And then what you do to set it is you just kind of back spool um, your line, your reeler. So I have it set right now. And as you can see, there's a little uh, yellow pin there that's holding the trigger in and as soon as the spool free spools it goes wow that was very smooth guys um, so as soon as I gave it just a little bit of a movement that flung right up that was very smooth that 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 was pretty awesome that means I gotta try that again so now I have it actually set on the light bite and let's see if I just move that oh wow yeah barely move that okay so not very much friction um, it wouldn't take much to just pop that flag up. So let's see how that holds up in, uh, let's say, North Dakota wind, because it can get pretty darn windy out there on the ice. All right, so I have it set for the little bit tougher bite. Um, and let's just kind of blow on this a little bit, see if I can get it to move. Okay, so that's pretty good. I held up there. I'll kind of shake it a little bit, see if that does anything. Um, it seems to be holding really well, actually. Okay, get a little bit more of a shake here. Okay, well, okay, that would definitely hold up to the North Dakota wind. Um, I know that, um, you know, my spool's not completely free spooling, but uh, I have the tension set really light. So that was pretty amazing. Let's uh, set it now to be completely free spooling and let's see what that flag does. So now I have it set again. I'm going to shake it a little bit. There we go, triggered it. So it triggered a little bit faster this time because I don't have the spool tension set high at all. It's actually on nothing. Um, but that still held up to quite a bit of movement um, before it actually popped. So now I'm just gonna kind of blow on it here and see if that does anything. 
Got it set once again on the uh, tougher bite. There, I did get it to trigger uh, with some wind. So it would trigger with some wind if you don't have that tension set. Uh, but overall, I think that's going to hold up really good to the wind uh, because you have such an ability to fine tune that to what uh, what's going on. And you don't have to have the flag up either. I have the flag up and I believe you can actually turn it to the side like this when it's sitting there. So it's less of a chance for that movement. Um, because yeah, if you set it like this and you have that flag off to the side, it's going to move a lot less in that wind. So even better. Good concept there. So now here's where you have your battery compartment. You have the switch for your bubbler. And then you have your switch for your light. So uh, let's take a look at that. So I took the battery compartment uh, knob off here and it does just free fall. And it actually fell like down here. So do not change your batteries out by the ice hole. You will lose this. Um, but anyway, it takes 2D batteries, if I can get this open. And you really do have to push your batteries down uh, pretty hard to get those uh, locked into place. Uh, but 2D batteries. And then you can turn on your light. So I'll activate my light. So my light is now on, which is a great feature again because I do a lot of fishing for walleye at night. And uh, yeah, barely touched that. The flag popped up and the light turned on. That light is bright. You will be able to see that from a long ways out. So awesome, love that. So with the light on to reset it, I was gonna reset it and it turns off. So you have that little bit of a magnet there on the trigger that turns off your light. So as soon as the flag trips, the light turns on. Awesome. Okay, and here's the switch to the bubbler. So let's take a look at that real quick. So now we're looking at the underside of the tip up. And you can see here, here's your bubbler cord. Uh, this goes down about six inches. But I believe if a guy wanted to extend that, you probably could just pull it off and change out the hose. Uh, you got plenty of room down here. Um, and I don't know how stiff this is going to get in the cold, um, but it does kind of... Uh, arc like this and I don't think you need this going all the way down into the water. I think this can just touch the surface of the water and as long as there's a little bit of movement uh, the water shouldn't form ice. Uh, but I will definitely give this a try this year. I love this concept and uh, I suppose if a guy needed to they could add a weight on the end of this too if it was uh, curling back up like that. But love that feature. I'm very excited to try that. When you're done with it you pretty much just tuck it away like this and snap it into place and you're good to go. One of my favorite features about this tip up is the fact that the reel stays out of the water. Oftentimes when I'm ice fishing in the cold temperatures um, with those tip ups that have the spool in the water, as soon as you move holes or anything like that, or even pull it out of the hole to check your bait, the line freezes to itself and it's an absolute struggle <laughs> to get it unfrozen. So the fact that this keeps your string out of the hole, I am excited for that. I am really excited for that. I think that's going to make a huge difference. Now, some of the string will freeze to itself just because you're pulling it out of the, out of the water, but it's going to be a lot less of a struggle because the whole entire spool doesn't get wet. So great concept on that, Freybill. I appreciate you thinking of that. So there you go. First impressions, first thoughts, kind of a first look at this. Again, very durable. It feels really well built. Um, everything fits really nice. Now they are about $70 and I just purchased it. And that was kind of a hard thing to think about. But when you talk about all these different features, like when you think that you're getting a light, you're getting a bubbler, you're getting the inline reel, you're getting a nice case and stuff like that. Everything's so well built. All those features put together makes this actually a pretty good deal. I mean, if you had to buy everything separately, that's going to cost you quite a bit of money. And I look at this as just having like another fishing pole, you know, and some of the fishing poles that people are buying nowadays are 120 to 150 to $200. This is just like having another really good fishing pole out on the ice. So I would say with that, $70 is pretty cheap for another fishing pole out on the ice if you use these. So I'm impressed, Freybill. Good work on this product. I hope to really get a lot of use out of this. Again, the trigger system is really light. It's very smooth. Um, everything appears to be very well built. So kudos. Yeah. Can't wait to try it. All right. If you guys have any questions, let me know.